When there's an injustice, whether it's against you or someone you love or someone you believe in, stand up. Don't sit down. Don't sit down on them because you know, they need you. Welcome, everybody, to our coverage of the Johnny Depp Amber Heard trial in Fairfax, Virginia. We're breaking down a recap of every day for the next several weeks as this trial goes on. And I'm so excited to bring so many experts. Guys, I could not do this by myself. This is not about me. It's not about any of us. This is about Johnny Depp and getting to the truth. Uh, I want to make sure we give you as honest and unbiased coverage as possible. I know some of you are going to say, well, Andy, how can you? Your team, Johnny, what's going on? I implore any Amber Depp, or sorry, Amber, Amber Heard fan, please reach out. Come on this show. Let's hear it out. Let's hear it out. No Amber fan will talk to me. No Amber fan will have a conversation, and I think that says something. But we have so many amazing experts and people in this Justice for Johnny community that I am so excited to have on board to help us break down what we're hearing as the trial goes. And today, there were no cameras. Uh, what there was uh, was jury uh, selection, and we can confirm that the jury has been selected. Uh, we're going to have some amazing guests today. First up, we have Alexandra De DeFrank, uh, who's here. She is a psychologist sexologist and she's been following the johnny depp case for a while alexandra so great to have you here welcome to the show hello andy so great to be here as well thank you for inviting me we've been waiting for this for so long we obviously had a first attempt through the uk trial we're going to talk about that too but this is a big moment for johnny in the case because it's now really about them it's not about the tabloid and the magazine, it's really about these two individuals now, so I'm very really excited to get to the bottom of what happened. Uh, also, got to thank uh, the amazing It's Kim, who has been helping behind the scenes tremendously. She has been helping me guys so much, leading a team of some amazing researchers, producers who have been helping us get a lot of this information for you. I got to thank Robin, Casey, Kara, Gene, Steph, Rebel Media. Thank you guys so much for stepping up behind the scenes to help us compile this. Uh, you guys have been amazing. Uh, in fact, they have been researching, and we're going to be trying to do this every day we are going to be compiling a document that i'm going through as i'm we're all making notes and organizing it for you at the end of every stream we're going to make this document available for you because i want you guys to have it everything we're talking about if we can't get to every little detail i want you guys to have it because that's the point of this let's get to the truth Let's find the justice here. Let's make sure we actually get what's going on uh, to everybody out there. Uh, so Kim and everybody on the team, amazing work. Thank you guys so much. Uh, this has been really important to, for us, I think all of us to do, but I just felt a pressure and I know I can't, what, what can I do unless I, I, I can have some other people who really know this better to really help get it out there? I have a platform. I want to use my platform, my voice to help get this case heard because I think what's happened to Johnny is just not right. We've been, I've been following this case and researching it, get, digging deep for a long time. Uh, and so my goal to you is to bring a lot of that information to you guys through this trial, why we are justice for Johnny Depp, uh, and really get to the bottom of it. So where I want to start today is just a recap of what happened on the, on the uh, trial day. The jury has been selected. Uh, they selected. I'm going to go through a couple, uh, a lot of reports coming through. Deadline usually is a very bad place to go, but they gave us a pretty good recap. Problem is we had no cameras in, so we're at the whim of hearing the testimony. And one I really like to, to rely on is Nick Wallace, if you guys aren't familiar with him. Really great reporter. He filed the UK uh, case in great depth. Uh, he's going to be joining the show at some point as often as I can get him. I'd love to have him here because he's a fantastic uh, reporter on all this. Uh, but he was able to go from England out to Fairfax and he was there early as you can see here um, going through a, a very cold morning to line up uh, in the queues to get in. Representatives from Fairfax uh, offices are in good form. Uh, I'm, I'm in the building where well, we're not allowed to take any photographs but at least it's warm inside with coffee. Met filling a fellow hacks and lovely fans. Many traveled miles Miles to be there. Jury selection started at 10 a.m. To reiterate, there will be no live tweeting or reporting of any kind inside the court. And you guys need to know that's during the televised too. Now, we'll have a televised, so we'll be able to report it and see it, you guys, and pull those clips. Uh, but today they had to do it all by handwritten notes. Um, cameras will not show us the jurors, but we'll be able to report the judge's comments once we're out. I wasn't even sure if they were going to let the public in, but they did. The public was allowed to hear it. They weren't allowed to see the jurors throughout this process. Uh, about two hours in, they broke for lunch. Um, and so there were 60 potential jurors that they pulled from, uh, and they had to whittle that down to 11 jurors, seven of whom will be formal jurors with four observing procedures. Now, what's really interesting about this is no one's going to know if they're the backup which is actually a really important thing because if you know you're the backup, you're not going to really listen. You're not going to do your job. And so to have uh, those 11 people all sort of treating it as if they're the real jurors, and then four of them will be put on the sidelines in case they need it. 
Um, that's how this is working. Uh, welcome, Anne. Anne has just joined the show. So happy to have you, Anne. Thanks for being here. Great to meet you. Hi. Thank you. I'm going to try and get you. All right. There we go. We got um, it. <laughs> okay. Welcome. I'm so happy to have you here. Um, and uh, we, what we're doing is going through the recap of the day. And then I'm going to come back to you guys to talk sort of overall topics. But as I was breaking down Nick Wallace's report, since he was there on the inside, uh, mm -hmm. they basically were saying that um, jurors can be excused if they have holidays booked. So if they're going on vacation, you can get out of jury duty. However, if you have a small restaurant that's short staffed, not a good enough excuse. Very interesting what they're sort of allowing the jurors to say as excuses or not. Medical conditions, medical conditions were allowed to let people be excused, uh, but the judge really had to go through this very quickly to whittle down who seemed right and who seemed wrong. And apparently, she was working at a very fast speed. To her credit, uh, to their credit, uh, to um, uh, so good to hear. Uh, one of those with legitimate reasons dropped out, and it wasn't a question of finding which potential jurors had any opinion on what they'd heard about the cases. Uh, this was uh, one juror said there was some DV going on, but I haven't read the details. When asked again, she said, is it to Miss Amber Heard? That's all I know. Potential juror was then asked if she had formed an opinion on those reports. She replied, I don't have a strong opinion about what has or hasn't occurred. The judge allowed her to remain on the uh, potential juror. Johnny Depp's attorney objected on the grounds of the juror stated DV as a fact, but was overruled. Uh, and that was only the first of uh, potential jurors. The process after lunch, uh, they have five vetoes that they were able to use in the next you know period when they came back. Um, uh, JD, uh, he was sitting to the right of the judge wearing a lightish suit with the same sort of haircut he had for the 2020 trial. Amber Heard is wearing a tailored black suit with a white blouse and tussled blonde hair uh, a few inches below her shoulder. Neither have said a word and are not looking at each other. I saw read multiple reports that they did not make eye contact to anyone's notice throughout the whole proceeding. Um, so uh, there's crew, there's TV in a press room is what I've also been able to gather. A circus, I expect that the parties will do everything to avoid being censored in that regard. Um, going back in, they're trying to make sure the TV crews are getting what they need. Early bath today, uh, they were sworn out by 3.30, so it was early. Judging by the pitch of their voices, we think we have five men and four women with two whose voices were so quiet they didn't pick up on the audio feed, uh, but they'll be able to see them tomorrow. So, so far, the, we're guessing, we don't know yet, but five men, four women, two, still figuring that out. Uh, tomorrow begin opening statements from both parties' attorneys, Benjamin Chu, going first on behalf of Johnny. Then Wednesday, Johnny Depp will take the stand. More thoughts and notes in my newsletter, which I do, and I want to plug him. Nick, subscribe to his newsletter. It's 10 bucks, and you guys get updates from him. Uh, he's a really good resource, and I know his fans uh, love that he's been able to get out here. So thanks for supporting him to get here. Uh, and so there you go. Uh, there, there's a few other uh, sort of takeaways that I gathered, including this one, where basically uh, one of the we – we need to find out – what you know and whether you can be a fair and partial juror, she told the hearing, which was close the public. What you hear about this case must be limited to what you hear within the four walls of this courtroom. Majority of the prospective jurors said they had heard snippets about the case, seen photos, or had read a handful of articles, but all said they could keep an open mind. One man told the court he was familiar with Depp, but had never heard of Amber Heard. Asked if he was a fan of Depp, he laughed and replied, not really, I've seen his movies. Another possible juror read out loud a text message his wife had sent him earlier that morning. Amber is psychotic. Johnny was set up. Nobody pays attention to spousal abuse when the husband is the victim. LOL, he said, laughing. The, the message solicited a roar of approval from dozens of Depp fans who has turned up hours earlier to snag a place in the overflow room, dwarfing the handful of reporters. Asked if he could set aside his wife's definitive opinions, he said he could and joked, she tends to exaggerate. Uh, but this was clearly the takeaway here where one of the protect, uh, project, prospective jurors uh, literally had to read out the text of his wife calling Amber Heard psychotic. I found that rather interesting because that's really what I want to talk about today with these two guests. Uh, Alexandra's psychologist. Uh, Anne is a therapist. The question at hand now that we know the jury's been selected and the trial will begin tomorrow, which we'll have in depth with clips, etc., is Amber Heard a psychotic? More importantly, I think the real question I want to get into, how do we get over this credibility issue with Amber Heard? There's a lot of issues and lies and previous things she's done that I think is really what set the tone for a lot of us as to why we joined this Justice for Johnny campaign. And uh, I want to go through some of that. And to be fair, I've also compiled some of the things that I assume Amber fans would say against Johnny. And I got I to be honest, it's just outweighs, the evidence outweighs the other side in Amber Heard's credibility issues. So 
I want to get to some of these issues. So if you're unfamiliar with this case, I thought since we have a day to prep before we really get started, let's rewind, shall we, guys? Let's go through the credibility issue of Amber Heard. And I'd love your expert opinions. Now, I want to be clear. You do, But let's be clear. Anything else you need to say legally, you guys do not represent Amber. You've never diagnosed her. You have never met her. We are not diagnosing her. We are going to speak just in general as, as you guys as experts do. Is that? Did I get that out? Anything else you guys want to add to, to protect yourself? <laughs> I appreciate all that. That's good. Good disclaimer. Good. So disclaimer, you know, right ahead of the time. Uh, we have not, we don't, we haven't met her. We don't know her, but we can sort of speculate based on the evidence we've seen and the depositions and things we've heard of her. Uh, so I, I want to go through some of this because for me, the credibility issues are pretty massive. And the audio leak is really probably the biggest example of that. Now we have clips I can set up and play, but I want to go to you, Alexandra, first. What is it about the audio that really sets a credibility issue for Amber Heard. Can you sort of sum that up in your opinion for people who maybe haven't heard the audio? Mm -hmm. Well, in, in very, very briefly, very shortly, I can tell that during the conversation, the two hours conversation, she kind of changes the narrative. She starts with one, let's say I wasn't hitting you, I wasn't punching you, then she changes into something else, then she changes back again when caught on a lie she changes once again uh, her narrative. Every time, the same thing with the deposition, every time she's been played her own voice, she, uh, the recording of her own voice with the things that she just said, she's going to change the narrative once again, twisting it once again. And during the conversation, the two hours conversation that they have, uh, Johnny and her, you can hear how she's gaslighting him. Gaslighting means she's changing the reality. She's hiding facts, changing facts. She's changing the narrative of the reality. She's presenting another version, like a virtual reality, virtual uh, alternative universe. Major. And this is something that you can pick on constantly. She's even changing, like Johnny said one thing, he said, I love you. And she said, you just told me you loved me, like past tense. And he just said it in the present tense. And he, because obviously it's not like he is going to remember every word he said. He's like, okay, if I did that, I apologize. So he's already doubting his own words. The, the thing that he just said, because this is something that she has been doing, I assume, for a long, long time. Gaslighting is when someone is going to twist the reality, is going to present an alternative reality. Later on, that person is going to make you feel stupid, make you feel crazy, or that you have a poor memory. Uh, if you think that it was a different way, and then they're going to shame you about that, and they're going to pick on that. Like, oh, you are, you are, your memory is so bad. Right. And then you are going to start thinking about it. And then they are going to gaslight the gaslighting. Like, no, it wasn't like that. You're wrong. So this is what we can hear in the recording. That's the hitting, like, right. like the shocking part of the recording. Hey, and I want to come to you next because I know, and just for full sense, you came in a little later. I want to make sure people know you've, you're an author on this topic. You have really followed, in fact, your website here with your transcripts and sort of analysis, I think is very valuable where you break down this. You, you've also uh, written a book about um, uh, partner abuse, except DV, et cetera, where we always have to speak in codes here. Pardon me uh, because of YouTube algorithm frustrations. But um, I, I want to get your thoughts, but I also just want to quickly play a clip and I want to have you respond. This is one that I think was very telling for most. Most, whereas this, for those who haven't heard it, Amber's constant pressing of why do you want to leave, Johnny? Why do you always leave the fight? Why do you leave the fight? I, I want you guys to hear it directly. Ma let's let's it ask Travis to tonight. If you yes, why don't we him. invite Travis into our, our, our into our fucked up, broken ass, three fucking wheeled truck of a marriage? Why don't we crash it straight into the wall because no one knows us better than fucking Travis. Hold on, I'm at the right the, code. The truth will come out. What truth? Sorry, I'm at the wrong. It's at 48. Here it is. Sorry, I, pardon me. Here it is. I have the wrong. I have the clip wrong. Things get physical. Fucking, you know, we have to separate. 17 more fights and have to be over with from one another. Whether it's we got married, I knew the fucking fights an hour stop by or thought maybe 10 hours would occur the day. We must. 
There can be no physical violence. I can't promise you that I'll be perfect. I, I can't promise out. you I won't get physical. I freak out. I fucking sometimes get so mad. I you cannot it. make you no can't decision. promise you Calm won't get physical again, again because you get. Sorry, it's playing on. I, my other one needs to stop. Pardon me, guys. Live, live feeds. As and, and all so props, all credit to it. Brian Fellow, for. Right. Uh, I can fucking promise you, I'm you know. Do everything to change. I would, you didn't even come home last. I feel like I have nothing to cling on to. A semblance of marriage or commitment or stability. So I, I implore it's it's a long clip and I, I there but there's a moment Anna, and you can help reiterate it too. He's trying to acknowledge he doesn't want to get into these situations. He's being pushed in these situations. He feels he's constantly trying to walk away, and she's always just like, "Talk to me, talk to me, no, deal with it. What is what it is." Can you break that down, sort of what what you heard when you when you heard this audio and why it made Johnny Depp look less like the abuser? Yeah, so I, I'd like to give a little bit of background on this on this audio. So this. This was consensually recorded, a two-hour conversation between Amber and Johnny. This is the day after one of the times that Amber hit Johnny. And um, they had been at the penthouse in L.A. She hit him. He left and went to his house house in L.A. And then this, she came to him at the house house uh, the next day, and this is their conversation. Um, so one one part in this conversation that you've um, highlighted here is sort of the antithesis of what you would expect. Uh, you know, Johnny's response is the opposite of what you would expect from an abuser. Uh, Amber's statements are the opposite of what you would expect from somebody who's being abuse, abused. So Johnny keeps trying throughout this two hours, he keeps trying to present you know, this is how we could be together as a couple and not have these physical fights. And she keeps thwarting him. And, and her mantra throughout, besides that there's a part where she says, I hit you and I'll do it again. Um, she keeps harping on him. What I hate about you is that when we get into an argument, you leave. She keeps using the word split. You split. And she just goes on and on and on about how terrible a person Johnny is because he leaves when there's fights. And that's not, yeah, not typical that you would hear an abused person say, the problem I've got with you, my abuser, is you leave when we're having fights. Um, so, yeah, I think it's a very telling Right. Typically, you do want to be nowhere near your partner as that's happening. And, and, and when you listen to this audio, guys, which I implore you go check out. In fact, I, I want to plug everybody who's been in, 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 instrumental in this uh, campaign and, and justice for Johnny, but incredibly average that Brian Fellow does an amazing breakdown and you can get the full audio with these portions there. Um, so, all right. So, so right there, out, out, already out the gate is the audio tape. The audio tape hurts her credibility tremendously because she admits to this. We're, I'm going to put this link again in the description of this video at the end of the video. You guys can go through, find these links, watch more in detail. Uh, but the audio tape is pretty damning because that's really what turned me. Because when you hear it, you really hear just how sad and scared Johnny is, like how aggressive Amber is. And the narrative that we sort of are being told to believe just flips on its head when you realize, whoa, no, well, there's way more happening in there. But it, it, it can Well, and I want to say, Andy. No, please, Andy, go ahead. Think, yeah, I think that you may be so accustomed to the story, you're kind of missing part of it for your audience, which is in that audio, in that two hours, she a number of times admits to hitting Johnny. Yes. She, Thank she you. She berates him for being a baby, for not taking her physical abuse. Um, she says things like, you weren't punched, you were hit. And, and so there's just, there's so many pieces in there that are, um, she's letting the cat out of the bag. Right. And then I, when I've heard, and thank you, because I, you're right, I'm trying to get through so many things here that I, I, and I'm telling you to check it out, but thank you for reiterating that because it's very important. She admits to the abuse. And that's, yeah. the, that's the problem because Johnny's filing back, no, she's the abuser, not me. And some Amber detract, you know, people will try to say, supporters like, well, no, they were doing it to each other. But it's very clear the one moment that Johnny is even fessed up to is, yes, I did 
in, in pushing her away to stop the violence is 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 what is they're referring to. So they're they're mm -hmm. sort of the the only defense I've seen against these audios of like, well, all right, when you hear it, it's pretty damning. It, well, no, he does it too, and it's very clear as you listen to this. No, 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 that's not the vibe. Because again, I, I if I was being abused and I'm being recorded, I'm definitely going to talk about all the times you hit me in said conversation. I, I would think that's just what a rational person was do does, but she can't because he doesn't, is the vibe it really comes across as you listen to this audio team. It's very we or da 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 but it's, it, it, re it, it plays so clearly that she's constantly aggressive and then gets to a point where he has to push back or yell or gets frustrated at her aggression um, and not the other way around, which Amber has said in her depositions, et cetera. So huge credibility issue right out the gate, which didn't even play into the UK trial at all, mind you, which like they didn't even really accept or really listen to those tapes the way they should have. Um, add to that, add to that, Amber is also already being investigated for perjury in a previous case in Australia. And again, some Amber fans, I, I got in a back and forth because I try to hear and I'm like, I want to hear, what am I missing? I, I'm so confused. It seems so clear cut. Oh, who cares about that case? Well, I care about that case because it's perjury. She literally lied to the court and the government in Australia about smuggling her dogs in. Uh, I, I, Alexander, just go back to you. This, to sum up sort of what happened here, she was investigated. She's now being investigated by the FBI for lying about did bringing her dogs into the world now honestly it's like is this really that big of a deal it's, it sort of does seem sort of silly but it's gotten to a point where it's she lied and perjured herself under oath and that's a problem for me because well then who's to say she's ever going to be honest under oath alexander do you, do you see this as a big problem to her credibility when she lied in australia yeah. Yes, because it might seem like not a big deal because, okay, there are just two puppies bringing, smuggling her dogs in Australia. But what it's actually saying is that two things. First, that she thinks she's above the law. Mm -hmm. So this is, you know, if we look in DSM, in the, in the personality disorders, there's certain type of personality that they think they're above the law, that they can do whatever they want. Right, and they will actually call the law silly. Well, there's a reason why Australia has this law, right? So that's the first thing. The second thing, she committed perjury, and she kind of like, if I'm right, she made someone to commit perjury as well. Right, her assistant. Yeah. She made her assistant so, do a document to say to to back up her claim. So it wasn't even that she lied; she forced someone else to lie. Thank you for reminding me. So, yeah, so we have a serious issue here because we have, you know, we are building the profile of this person and she constantly, as we know, changes the reality. She also thinks she's above the law. She perjured herself. So how can we trust whatever comes out of her mouth? So I think it's a big deal, especially because it was a legal document. Now, again, I'm fast forwarding through lies because I, I want to get to all of this. So uh, this is all in the document. As we go through these examples, you can look down each one. But let's come back to you. Um, and as we look at this, uh, the biggest another big one, she promised to donate the settlement money in their divorce to charity. Again, some of you might say, well, who cares how she spends her money or what happens? It's very instrumental. You understand they made a divorce agreement. Amber Heard then promised to donate said seven millions of the seven million dollars, guys, of the divorce agreement to the ACLU and the Ch L.A. Children's Hospital. Um, now she was getting that money in portions because she didn't want Johnny just to pay it out because she didn't want Johnny to get the tax benefit, guys. She didn't want Johnny to get any benefit from donating this money to charity, so she insisted that she get the money. Okay, fine. She gets the money, and then what happens? She well, I, I don't have all the money yet. I'm waiting till I have all the money. Okay. She had the money in hand. I think it was for like eight or nine months, eight or nine months before Johnny sued. She had all $7 million in pocket and she never donated the money. She never donated the money to the Children's Hospital LA. It's uh, There's a big argument as to whether she paid the ACLU. Did Elon Musk pay it? She got caught lying. And then what was problematic about this is she went and she did a press tour. 
Um, I guess I don't have that clip. I'll make sure we have it for the next one. Kim, we'll, we can add that. But she did a press tour and she did some interviews where she was talking about the fact that she don't, yeah, I didn't accept a single dollar of it. Well, actually, it's a lie. She's accepted all $7 million to pay to fight Johnny. So Johnny's money in the divorce settlement really is going to defend her in this case is what's so crazy. And then the judge in the UK trial said, well, she doesn't seem like somebody would be a gold digger or being taken advantage of Johnny because she gave that money to charity. And they wouldn't even hear it in the appeal that she didn't. The UK judge was like, yeah, I know I said that, but who cares anyway, whatever. Uh, yet another reason why that UK case was just insanely frustrating based on the facts. But Anne, anything else you want to add to the fact of her credibility issue saying that she promised to give sick kids money and then lied about it in press? I think it's huge. I, I think for me, this is the biggie um, because she worked this. This this was how she became famous after the divorce and through the whole process. This is how she turned herself into the victim hero and uh, gave herself credibility. So right out of the gate, as soon as there was a divorce settlement, and in the settlement it had said that they both agreed that they would not badmouth each other. So within two days of that settlement, Amber gave a public statement that the totality of my settlement, the $7 million, I'm donating all of it to these two charities. And she got herself a lot of goodwill because of saying that. And she kept telling the story over and over and over again. And, and then she started to make it past tense. I, I have donated. It's all been donated. And uh, a great thing about this trial being the second trial is that it became evident in um, the London trial that she had not actually donated this money. So it does very much create a, um, a problem for her with her credibility. And I do think if um, there's already evidence out there that she did not give the money to the, uh, the sick children's hospital, there's uh, highly likely, from my perspective, if she had paid the ACLU, we would have heard about it. If there was some evidence that she'd actually paid the ACLU the money, she would have been out there with that evidence. Um, and then there was another part. The other part is that, um, so initially Johnny started paying to the, to the, um, the sick kids. She, he made a donation to the sick kids on her behalf. And you're right, she came through and she said, no, 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 you can't do that. Now the thing about the taxes, to me, that's a cover story. Right. She said, you can't do that because then you're, you're getting a tax benefit. I'm oh, not. Absolutely. I don't think that's what it was about at all. Yeah, absolutely. This was about, she never had any intention of making the donation. So, of course, if Johnny made the donation in her name, she's being thwarted in her plot to just have the cover story of I'm making these payments. Yeah, absolutely. There again, the the, the problem. Not only is it she lying again, she's purged herself in her lie. Now she's lying about sick kids. It just shows she really has no morals at whatever. She'll she'll lie at any cost to get what she needs done. And again, that's the problem here. So we're supposed to believe her. Okay. Well, show me that evidence because all these things are now making your credibility and your believability die down even further. And again, there's no real defense against this. She's been caught. Her lawyer has admitted, yeah, well, she's paid a large sum of the money and she's still planning to pay it off. But that's not what she said in the interviews where she literally is quoted saying, yep, all seven million. It was never about the money. It's just another lie that she's told. Add to that that, you know, Johnny Depp severed his finger thanks to Amber Heard allegedly throwing a vodka bottle at him, uh, which then uh, you know, broke the bone. Um, and uh, this this is awful. And so threw a vodka bottle in, which cut the type of his fingers, crushed the bone. She denies it. Um, but again, yet another example of listening to that audio tape that mm -hmm. this only adds to it. Alexandra, thoughts on the, on the finger being cut off? Yeah, that, uh, that situation that originally when Johnny was asked about it, he said that, well, he, with his characteristical smile when he's uncomfortable, he said, well, I cut my finger. And so he, I think he said that to his bodyguard. But then the next week or two weeks later, he said, like, actually, it wasn't me that did it. It was actually Amber who did this to me. And I originally lied because I wanted to protect her. 
which is also selling a lot because I don't know if we can see the viewer here, people that have been DV, uh, they ha have this tendency of covering up for the, for the perpetrator. So that's also, a ter you know, it's a very telling thing. It's an awful thing that happened. Uh, it's a proof, real proof of what happened and how she had a huge control over him, even for him to cover up this thing to save her. So it, it's, it's really, it's really terrible what happened. And it makes me very sad, actually. I mean, all these things would be enough for me, but no, it gets worse, guys, because who's actually been charged with DV? Oh, right. Miss Amber Heard. Amber Heard was arrested in 2009 on a charge of hitting her girlfriend. Now, again, this is where Amber fans will well know her girlfriend, uh, ta 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 Tasia. Tas 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 Do you know what Tasia is? It? How we pronounce that? Apologies if I'm Aisha, I think. Tasha. Uh, Tasha dropped the charges and said it was no big deal. Well, it was a big deal. She was arrested. She actually spent some time in that holding facility. Uh, and then they, uh, in order to change the story after the fact, uh, apparently she uh, grabbed her arm, struck her, uh, bro like hurt her wrist and the, the whatever she was wearing at the time. It was it was aggressive, and um, however, the police revised the request to delete the arrest information on the case and allowed Washington state law. It was then deleted from the system because the girlfriend said, "I take it back." That's what happened. Now, okay, maybe this was well, a nothing issue. Maybe this was another issue. They blamed it on a homo homophobic officer, and what was very interesting. And I don't know if that's where you're going, but I was making, I'm get it on. Then I want to hear from you. She yeah. said, "Oh, they were homophobic." Rest war, yada yada yada. Well, no. Later, it turned out the officer not was not homophobic. She was a proud lesbian woman who was extremely frustrated by this false narrative that Tassa was putting out there, reaffirming that no, there was absolutely an aggressive a case of assault, and just because she changed her mind doesn't mean it didn't happen. This was clearly an issue that happened. The officers have confirmed this, and the way, again, they've been caught twisting the story to fit their narrative is yet another reason why her credibility is in question. But yes, Anne, add to that. What were you going to say? Yeah, so this happened in my general neck of the woods. I'm in the Seattle area, and um, it was actually witnessed by a police officer. There was an, in the airport, in the SeaTac airport, an officer witnessed it. So an officer made the arrest based on what the officer had witnessed. It got dropped the next day because neither of the parties were Washington State residents. That's why it got dropped. And um, then the hom homophobic thing, um, they claimed that the female police officer was homophobic and that's why they, the, the police officer overreacted and, and uh, turned out the police officer is, is a lesbian. So um, that didn't, doesn't fly. Doesn't fly. And in fact, neither does the fact that she did, in fact, plead guilty as well later to falsifying that Australian immigration document. She did. She had to plead guilty to it. Uh, she also lied to U.S. Immigration about her British personal assistant, told him that she was just a friend, not working unlawfully, aid tells the court, which she actually was. Uh, she then was also um, caught cheating on Johnny while they were married, allegedly. Uh, James Franco, Elon Musk, Cara Delevingne, all these people were ones that have been allegedly Johnny has accused her of sleeping with. She denies those. Um, less, uh, I like the stuff that's more exact proven, but I don't know, looking at that clip of James Franco entering the elevator with Amber heard i find it hard to believe that they were just doing a work meeting <laughs> i just don't i'm not buying it personally uh there are inconsistencies regarding the 911 call from the phone throwing incident amber heard and friends constant contradictions with her friends johnny depp claims uh there's also the photo shoot and appearances that show amber was not actually harmed after these assaults uh she showed up on james corden uh was this the day after guys correct yes this was literally the day after um, and you can tell in this, you know, the, the makeup person saying, well, yeah, I covered up some bruising, but as you get close up on this and, and a real abuse victims have sp spoken up on the amount of abuse she claims to have suffered, it just makes no sense. There's just no physical way that the makeup could have really covered up the, the immense damage and, and injuries that she claimed to have had. Um, and just uh, once again shows that she really doesn't even pay attention to the stories she's even telling because she rushed to do a TV interview the next day, which again is a weird thing to do. Uh, Alexandra, what talk, talk about this. What are your thoughts on this, the alleged, you know, abuse and the images that seem to be doctored given that they don't match her the next day on these television interviews? Well, if, if you were assaulted, 
if you were in any way treated physically badly, you will not be able, you will not want to appear in front of a camera. You will want to hide because you will be feeling awful about what happened. It, it's not about even about the makeup. It's about your emotional and mental state. You will not want to be exposed out there for people to make questions, to ask. You will be showing a lot of pain in your eyes. You will be showing a lot of, you know, emotional distress. So you won't be able to perform a show like that, you know, which is, I could say, like a light comedy show and it's fun and stuff like this. So that's the first thing. And secondly, well, she claimed to have these terrible, terrible things done to her, to her face. And you see nothing. You see her laughing, smiling, making jokes. You see her opening her, her mouth widely where she was supposed to have a problem in her lip, right? So yeah. definitely, uh, no, that didn't happen. Yeah, it doesn't play that way. I mean, so there's also you can guys go to the there's a truth website. I will have the link in there that you guys can go through. I mean, uh, the, uh, these are just what is this? Ten very, very large reasons why her credibility is in in trouble. And anything else you want to add or recap as we've gone through that before we move over to the John Johnny's alleged issues? Yeah. So just that this is repeated over and over again that that um, she says she was so badly physically abused that she had a cut lip and she had a black you know, black eye, she had swelling, she had her hair pulled out, all of these very severe physical attacks. And then you've got makeup people and stylists and people who see her close up that in, over and over again, you've got all this testimony that says, no, nope, I didn't see any of that, um, undermining her credibility again. Yeah, and when you watch this interview, it's just very weird how, like, exactly, from not only just the, the look, the physicalness, but she, yeah, just why would you do an interview after such a trauma, traumatic event? Uh, that I mean, I guess you, some, some women can do it. Uh, it takes strength in, 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 for a real victim to do that, but I can't imagine you'd want to go be on James Corden chowing it up after such a, such a moment. But um, there you go. So I would, from my perspective, I don't put as much weight on that because I think that... A, a, an abuse victim could be quite accustomed to having to just put themselves together and get out there and do their thing. Um, it's more for me the the what she says is happened to her physically, and then we see evidence to the contrary. Right, the evidence, the physical evidence doesn't line up for you. Well, well said, yeah. fair. We we can't. No, none of us are speaking for any victims at all. We can't generalize like that. So I appreciate saying that, but. Clearly, some people, some victims feel some ways. Some victims feel the other way. Um, so, all right. So there, there we have a lot going up. Now, let again, full transparency. Let's not be biased, Justice Johnny Depp. Let's be fair, right? We got to make sure we hear both sides of this story. So we try to compile. Here's the criticism against Johnny, right? So now you can compare the two. Now there were these Paul Bettany texts. These are some dark texts. I got to say, I don't like these texts. I don't love it. Um, and. Uh, these messages are pretty damning, disturbing texts. Uh, again, gives context to the situation. Um, uh, something about effing her burnt corpse. These are pretty vile things. Um, I, I don't know what to say else about these. Of just like, I can't, this isn't, what you say in private with your friend doesn't mean you're doing it in real life is where I'm stuck. Like that, that's my first problem of like, I don't like reading this stuff. Um, but, given what I suspect happened to them, I can see why he's angry. I can see why he's maybe shooting the shit with his friend and getting very, with one person he's allowed to speak in confidence of just how much he hates this woman. Um, I would hate this woman too. <laughs> I don't know what I would say. And God, I don't want my private texts or thoughts to be shared with the world. Um, it's not a good look, but I don't, for me, it doesn't prove that his texts or messages that he's saying, some have connected is this, they were mentioning sort of Monty Python connections as well, potentially. I don't know how these two talk. I don't know their back and forth. Uh, but these texts were pretty, you know, pretty extreme and violent in their sort of how much he hates of her. Do either of you have an issue with these that sort of change your mind of Johnny, uh, Alexandra? Well, I, oh, I think Anne wanted to go first. Oh, yeah. Anne, go ahead, Anne. You can go first. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that, uh, so there's a, a woman, Teresa Silva is her name, and I wish I had it with me, I, unfortunately I don't, but she, um, she studied 
the London case, the, the London trial, um, Johnny Depp's London trial. And she studied it for what's the credibility of Amber Heard. And um, she actually took into account these text messages in weighing who does she think is telling the truth. And she looked at that, at these text messages as not being um, heavily weighted against Johnny. She didn't put much credit, credence to them because he was not, they, these were not ever intended to be sent as a threat to Amber. Right. They were never sent to Amber and they weren't intended to be sent to Amber. So, so those two components. So she really didn't see them as being significant in the case. Right. And it's sort of like, let's burn her. Uh, let's drown her before we burn her. I will effort. It's like escalating in a way that I'll be honest. I've had dark jokes where we're doing that. Does that mean we're violent people? No, I watched itchy and scratchy as a kid. Does that make me violent? No. Sometimes you speak closely to a friend in a way in private. That doesn't mean that you are the person in real life. So do I like reading these? No. But do I really know the context? And is this something she he said to Amber? No. Um, so this is one of the worst things against Johnny. And for me, it doesn't, I don't know, it doesn't change the credibility in my mind. Um, now, the other one that a lot of people use, and this, this was- Andy? Oh, sorry, yeah. Alexander, go ahead, real quick. One thing, one thing uh, connected with, with these messages, I think one important thing is when, when you are with your friend after a trauma, a person that you feel comf comfortable with, confident with, you need to vent. Because he was for such a long time, allegedly, abused emotionally and psychologically that he was shamed and he was feeling that he is all, the, all those things that she called him. So he needed from that shaming and feeling of guilt place to be able to go out there, to stand up, you need to have a healthy anger. You need to have that energy of healthy anger to be able to set limits. And a way of doing that sometimes is, I assume with, for him, it's having that dark sense of humor, that, you know, um, sarcastic or that, you know, dark things that you will say to vent the anger and to know that, okay, I, I said this, I fantasized. And then at the end of these messages, something very important, actually Johnny says at the end, I could never hurt her. Mm -hmm. So I think that is also important. So he vented, his friend helped him to vent this a little bit. And then said like, okay, enough. I, I will never do those things to her. So I think that part is important. And people that are on Amber's sides, they always cut that part of the messages. And they, they stick with all the awful things he wrote. Which they, he wrote see, I didn't even know that. I didn't even see that part. So I'm so glad you see it. That's why we're always learning. Even without it, I still feel like the venting is exactly what it is. I, I'm sure a lot of you have said nasty things about your exes. It's just divorce exes, especially when kids are involved. Like, I don't trust anybody's opinions that it gets dark. It gets to a place. But the fact that he actually added that and the Amber supporters edit that, they're so quick to talk about Brian edited this or that, but then they don't acknowledge that they also are, you know, it, it's it's wild. But that thank you for putting that out there because, yes, if he really said that, it only reiterates the fact that they're just talking. And sure, you might be grossed out by that or not, you don't like it, but it doesn't mean he's going to do it. Now, the other thing that I, I'm, I'm frustrated by is the drugs and alcohol. Now, look. He's admitted this. He's owned this. But being an addict, being an, doing these things or being alcoholic, that doesn't always mean you're violent. It just it, the, the correlation to the two is unfair. And I really feel like the UK judge just said, well, he does drugs. He does alcohol. He must have been he must have hit her, too. And there's just no correlation to the two. I mean, sure, sometimes it happens, but you can't just say every alcoholic does that. Some alcoholics fall asleep. Right. So it, 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 what your version of what happens to you when you're on, you know, uh, substances can really change. And I really I was really impressed by the way he opened up during the UK trial and owned it. He really came forward and he didn't he could have tried to he could have Amber always is trying to like lessen how bad she sounds. 
Johnny went all in on it and said, yep, uh, you know, and owned it and he owned it. And uh, again, that as someone who's made mistakes, had to take accountability and fast forward, I, I related to that of like, again, it just was another thing that I felt like he was being honest about. And so while a lot of people want to use his history of drugs and alcohol as a negative, it's sure not great. Do we, I'll go back to you, uh, uh, your turn in. Do you feel like this is a correlation to him abusing her? No, I don't. I And I think that it's it actually is part of uh, what Amber plays up. I, I think it's part of her narrative of how she creates her false accusation. So yes, it is true that in many cases of partner abuse and, and violence, there is um, uh, could be alcohol involved and that could make it worse. But just as you said, not always. And, and actually, um, we don't see in Johnny a history of him becoming uh, violent with drugs and alcohol. The one video that's out there that Amber took of Johnny, and it's the, you know, the cupboard door mm -hmm. uh, one, he's not assaultive to her at all. Um, she's not afraid of him at all. She's smug and um, obviously trying to set him up. But still, in trying to set him up, he's not he's not violent at all in that. That was also uh, wasn't that also the time where he lost like a half a million dollars learned from his, his accountant stealing from him? Wasn't that exactly that's part, the day. That was the same outburst when he did throw the glass around the wall that he had lost. What was it? Five hundred million dollars from his uh, accountant stealing from him, Alexandra. Am I correct? Six hundred million. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's like oh my. Yeah, I think I might smash a bottle then too. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Have if it's the same thing, but yeah. it's. Uh, yeah, that was one of the things that happened in 2016. Yeah, that, that's that's the morning he find out, I think, at night. You know, he has been drinking the entire night. And actually, the video starts with her kind of like poking him. And, and she starts saying like, oh, you have been drinking all that in the morning. And he said like, he said something like, uh, well, nothing bad happens to you. Mm. So it's clear that something is bothering him. And she just came there with the phone to pop him again, you know, like a plan. Uh, well, and obviously TMZ, what they did with this video, they show just the first part. They didn't show the beginning when she's settling everything. And they didn't show the last part when she's actually with the phone in the face, smiling. Mm -hmm. It's a really gross image. Yeah. He's just, she's and so smug. Good word. Yeah. And then there's another factor in this alcohol and drugs thing, and Johnny talks about it, um, and Teresa Silva in her paper talks about it. And, and I should say more about Teresa Silva. Silva. Um, so she wrote, and, it, and it's in a peer-reviewed journal. It's um, like a justice journal. And, um, and she's talking about it could actually be a coping mechanism for the target of abuse. The, the person who's being abused can turn to drugs and alcohol as a way of coping. And and Johnny does speak to that as you quoted him a this little is, while ago. I'm going to add this to the link. Is this what you're referring to? That's oh, it. Yeah, right. it's really good. Okay, I'll add that to our document. So as you guys read the, when you get the link at the end, you can go assess that as well because I'm unfamiliar, but I will check it out. Now, actually, go ahead. actually there's, an interview, there's an interview with Johnny when he talks openly about uh, his drugs and the alcohol. And what he says, he uses the, the phrase, very common phrase, by the way, uh, with patients of mine that had this problem. They say, like, he takes this as a medicine for the pain, that the constant pain that he used to feel in his life. Hmm. So he even says that he's, he used to use it as a suit for suiting himself. And what you can also see is when he's really, really upset, which he has all the rights to be upset, especially in that video. He's trying to calm himself down with the alcohol. And when he's really, really angry, he's putting the anger into objects, never people. So he still has control. Even when he's drinking, he still has control. And he knows that, okay, I'm, you know, breaking the glass now. I'm, I'm putting my anger into an object far from a person, so I don't harm them, and then he leaves. So he has plenty control of his behavior. 
Now, all right, perfect time to pivot to the biggest complaint about Johnny Depp, which, again, I want to be as unbiased as possible. Johnny Depp's history with violence. He Now he has been charged and he has assaulted. Now, in all these instances that I've found, it's always like security or a hot cop or bodyguard, rather, uh, or paparazzi. Um, there's also a, a crew member that he had, he got a problem with on set in a drunken tirade. So there are instances of this. So I want to come back to you, Alexander, in response, because to be fair, there are instances of this throughout his career. It's a handful overall, you know, a long period of a career where he has, you know, gotten into fisticuffs with these people, never females, always males. Uh, but what is your response to this, to the, to the detractors? Like, well, no, see, this is evidence that he can go to that place. Alexander, I'll go to you first. I will ask what are, what were the circumstances? Was he defending himself? Was he assaulted? It's unclear. I mean, he was said. charged with assault. We, I mean, each one's here, but um, we can go through each one. But yeah, it, it, we don't. I don't. We weren't there in the moment, so it's hard to really know what those instances were. Yeah. So that that would be my first question. You know, to to be able to, you know, have an opinion about that. You know. Is, is it him going after in a rage after someone or is him trying to put himself to, to set a boundary that was crossed? Because, you know, from what we see, what we hear in the audios is, to me at least, it seems that he always tries to set a boundary with words first. So my question would be, okay, when he had these problems with people, what was happening before? That would be my question. I don't know. I don't know the answer, so I'm leaving it up in there. Uh, Anne, what are your thoughts? I mean, because example, this was 2018 where he punched the crew member in a drunken tirade on the movie set. Does this? Because uh, again, we've 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 piled on to Amber, but it's only fair we cover both sides in this. Yeah. Um, what what is your response to this, Anne? Yeah. So this one I'm not familiar with. Some of the other one, so the um, the mention of boundaries is. I know that that's. One of the instances, at least, was about a paparazzi um, and his um, Johnny trying to set a boundary because of his, his pregnant wife at the time. Um, that one I I read more about. Um, there has been some property damage ones I've taken a look at. Um, now, like one, I'm just going through like one of these instances. It's about oh, his bodyguard hit hit somebody else. And so De it was Depp's concert, and so he settled that. That wasn't actually there. I'm just trying to go through each case so we can talk about it. The one with the crew member, uh, that that already happened. I'm talking the one on the crew. And I think there was one. There was one that got dropped. Um, that actually, and maybe it's the crew member one. Um, I don't. I don't know. Uh, there was one that was on a set, I think, and then when it was investigated, it nobody supported it. But. Maybe people, you know, were, were moved in some reason. You know, maybe he really did do it and people were lying. I, I don't know. Um, yeah, it's interesting. It's a location manager. And again, I don't know the story here. It's not, doesn't sound great, but again, it's, he, um, court filings, they were trying, he was, I guess, a, drunk and asleep in a, in a room. And then they were trying to remove him. Um, Depp's bodyguards were forced to remove him from the set because he had fallen asleep and then did a tirade. Um, Depp had verbally and physically assaulted him. He alleged uh, uh, the actor offered him 100000 to punch him in the face in return. Location manager is seeking unspecified damages from Depp. 14-page um, piling, blah, 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 blah. I don't know where this netted out. I have to find out. There's not, I'll add yeah. it to the document so we're clear. But again, okay, so, so, does it, so if he gets in a fight with a crew member who pisses him off, if he has a one-off instance, does this give Amber d credence for everything else that's happened? Who was, who was speaking? Was that you, Ann? Go ahead. Yeah, so one of the things we do know is that his previous partners all said it's totally out of character for them to think of Johnny ever being um, violent with them. He never was. Um, yeah, we, we actually have a report on that. Both Winona Ryder and Vanessa Paradis uh, can't, have, were witnesses in the UK trial. I, I think are on the witness docket for this. Uh, no, no one of his previous relationships, uh, I guess it was Ellen Barkin, right, who came forward and did say something, but then he was very vocal in explaining that one as well, where Ellen Barkin alleged something, but then Johnny's like, she wanted a relationship. I didn't. Um, you can learn about that as well. 
uncle it's a he said she said incident that that i didn't really take any massive weight with um yeah. because they weren't really that ex- an exclusive relationship i took vanessa Paradis and winona Ryder's testimony far greater since they actually had a longer relationship but you know uh, as we go through this the worst case we have is okay he has gotten drunk a couple times it seems mm-hmm. and gotten in fights with some bodyguards and some some guys who he's clearly disagreed with that's not great um, he's, he's sent some bad texts, uh, went to, to a friend that I, I honestly, I don't even really see that as a negative. He has drunk, you know, alcohol. He has done some drugs. So did Amber. <laughs> Amber. Let's not forget the fact that Amber was also, uh, one who was b- b- using a lot of substances during, during those times as well. Uh, as we that, that's what we have on both sides. So I want to sort of now go back to the panel and, and just as we wrap up here and you guys in the comments, based on the evidence of what you see so far, who has better credibility. Um, I, 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 there's not enough on Johnny's side just because he is the, the drunken rock star who fights a, punches a paparazzi or a, a, an annoying crew member on a set where we don't know the exact specifics doesn't to me make it seem like he's an abuser of his women, of the women in his life and his, in his relationships. And again, I fall back into the biggest piece of evidence in my mind is the audio tape. Cause you really get to hear them in private and the way they engage with each other. And sure. You could argue maybe they're at you know, Johnny's acting to try and know, cause he knows it's, it's recording, but you could make the same argument about Amber too. Uh, and so in both cases, you're really getting these two people be themselves and in listening to that audio tape added to the constant lies. I don't, I don't see any, any Johnny ever being caught for perjury or making shit up or saying something that didn't happen. Instead, we got him actually opening up about his alcoholism and such in the UK trial. As I weigh the two sides of what we have, it's really hard to not say, well, Amber, your credibility just fails to compare. I'm going to go to each of you. We'll start with you, Alexandra. Based on everything we see here, sort of final thoughts on Amber's credibility issue and who do we trust? I'm not diagnosing, but the words pathological liar comes to my mind. When we, t- when we talk about her, of course. And Johnny, to me, uh, he's always saying how much he p- appreciates, you know, the truth being out there. And for me, someone, mm-hmm. if he did wrong things, will he be doing all that, coming, you know, all that way, putting so much at risk once again, if he was lying? I don't think so. And if she was saying the truth, why she didn't, go to court why she didn't put on a you know an an, an abuse uh, uh how do you call it in the court when you when you do that and maybe you could help me with the word when well, you protection order you when talking? when you go to court to open a case against someone who has been abusing you she never did that well she actually did in in this kind of started the whole thing may 2016 the only thing she did is she went to the police and she wrote a report to have a restraint order but she never opened the whole case against him she never accused him of anything because what she wanted apparently was the money just also so, while, while we're there, LPS put this comment on. I'm not as familiar. I wanted to add it there, saying Johnny didn't hit that co- the crew member. He was reprimanded for attacking a homeless woman on the set. Film crew filmed the entire event, which shows he did not attack the guy physically. He was not drunk. I, I, someone please get me that link, and I'll add it to the document just so we have full uh, the full story. But or, sorry, Anne, you can continue. Yeah. So how this whole thing seems to have started was um, I, I think I think there's a good chance that Amber was working this story throughout the throughout the marriage yeah um and and part of it is accuse johnny of being um uh, aggressive as a way to cover up her aggression and and we have a lot of stories of of you know we talked about it early on with that with that recording johnny talking about um well amber actually chastising johnny for leaving splitting in her term when there would be this violence and Johnny's saying, we have to do that. We can't be violent. And and um, and there's a lot of history around what Johnny would do is like lock himself in the bathroom. There is a, There are incidents on an airplane where to get away from her, he locked himself in the airplane bathroom. There's a private jet. Um, and he spent the night, slept on the bathroom floor to get away from her because of her raging. 
um, and this would happen and we've got you know testimony from staff to back him up and that sort of thing and we've got we've got that recording where he's talking about them taking getting away and she's constantly chastising for him for that idea so that to me that two-hour recording I I wanted to know what was in the whole thing not just the snippets that are often put out there over where she she's says she hit him um, and um, I wanted to know what was in the whole thing so I transcribed the whole thing and uh, there's just so much evidence and when you do listen to it you feel like you're listening to an abusive woman and you feel like you're listening to an abused man. Um, yeah. So to me, that is really powerful. And then just this, this, well, I'm, I'm glad that you took the time to sort of take this systematic look at her lying pattern. So I very much think that there's um, a lot of evidence there. Yeah, look, and I, I and just be, I'm trying to get the other one. I'm a little, and just please bear with us. We're trying our best, and we always adjust and comment. I saw a couple of people criticizing. Guys, relax. Uh, I can't find that video that was mentioned. I'd love to see it. So if someone wants to send it to me, I will add it to that document later. There's a selfie, um, but we try our best to cover both sides. And, I, and this one, I just don't know. Yeah, that said, as I've said, I don't. I wasn't there. I don't know what happened in that instance, uh, and it's unclear, but I think it's safe to say, yeah, Johnny has had some altercations with paparazzi and some security guards. I don't think that negates his cred credibility here. Um, that's the issue here. I think as we've gone through both instances together, um, Amber's proven a pathological liar and has been charged with DV. Uh, against one of her partners and perjured herself and admitted on audio that, yeah, she she does it and she doesn't want to let Johnny escape when she does it. Those things are just undeniable for me as to why I chose to, after doing all the homework to ra you know rally for Johnny because I really feel like an injustice is being served. Men aren't treated the same. It's not maybe as common, but it happens a lot and we have to start treating all victims the same. And while we need to believe people when they come forward we also have to hear other sides and make sure we do our due diligence and give them due process to defend themselves and it doesn't feel like johnny was ever really given that right um so yeah i'm glad we got to go through this i'm really grateful for both of you here offering your expertise as we break down both of these things this is the type of stuff that's going to come forward over the next coming weeks from both sides to sort of break down who's telling the truth so i want to make sure you guys sort of had a overview top view as best we can we could have spent five hours guys going through every detail but over the past day thank you so much to my amazing research team for helping to compile as much of this that we could fast forward for you guys to give you sort of a rundown of where we stand i know there's a lot of depth fans who have been already know a lot of this but my goal here was to try to educate some new people who may be stumbling upon the case to understand well what's really at stake and who do i root for and what's happening i want to give each of you the last closing marks and then i'm going to get to your comments guys but alexandra we'll go to you first any final thoughts or things you want to add that you feel like we didn't mention or should be said as we wrap up this installment well i just want to mention one thing from the recording uh connected with what you just said that men are not treated the same she actually says that out loud she says oh my god sorry for the light um she says uh come on johnny go and say that you are a victim who is going to you big boy abused by a small girl who's going to believe you and she's mocking him and you know this is actually listening to that part to me is like watching one of those movies with villains when the villain is saying all the plan mm. she actually does that and actually it, it's scary to hear her right and i see you nodding so yeah yeah it's a different if it's a, it's a different recording than the two hour yeah, one it's, it's one that she actually point. made um secretly of him yeah um and and it it's backfired on her because it actually um, exposes her. Yeah, she's exposed herself a lot. Uh, any final words from you, Anne? Yeah, that um, this is a famous case, um, and I, I I really feel for Johnny. I uh, was glad to see that today when he came into court, he looked a little bit better than he has been looking. I've been really concerned about him I, and I'll and I'll say like I didn't come into this as a big fan I didn't mind his work but I wasn't that um you weren't obsessed I wasn't obsessed <laughs> but I really just 
um, because I work with a lot of men who are abused by women and I know how the silence of the culture, the pretense that this doesn't happen, and if it does happen, if women happen to be mean to their, their uh, male partners, it's okay or justified or even funny. And, it, and it's none of those things. I don't think that we should out of the gate believe anybody who says um, I'm abused. We should take a look at the case, take a look at what they say. Don't, don't immediately um, say no, can't be true. And don't immediately jump on, well, it must be true. We, we have to discern where the truth is. And in this case, there's a lot of evidence to, that, to help us make that discernment. Yeah, and it's frustrating. And I hope that it'll help other men. I hope that it will. And I know even over the last uh, six months to a year, as I've talked to men, when I tell him about this case, it, it helps them. It helps them to feel less alone. Yeah, well said. And it's it's frustrating as Court TV has already sort of begun. It's just you can smell the bias already on some of these reporters and half of them don't even seem to want to be there. I'm like, what? Just can't, Couldn't you find some interested parties who took a week to get the research down? It's very weird. I mean, this case has been out there already. It's so easy to do the homework and be prepared. And I don't feel like they are. So be careful with who you're watching. I know there's a lot of streams that'll be coming tomorrow. We may be covering some of it, but we will not be covering the entire day-to-day -day stream we're going to be instead watching taking notes reporting standalone clips and then we'll be meeting you every day after the trial same time 5 p.m eastern standard time uh, i want to thank my amazing guests today first up ann silvers uh that you can find her over at ann silvers on twitter as well as annsilvers.com uh thank you so much for being here anything else you want to add or plug oh well, thank you for having me yeah, wonderful to have you and so happy to have you back, Alexandra. You can go to uh, Humana, Alexandra DeFrank. I'll put th these links, make sure they're in the uh, description as well. Love the sticker there for justice. Uh, but Alexandra, thank you so much for being here. Anything else you want to say or plug? Justice for Johnny. <laughs> justice for Johnny, indeed. I'm clipping this portion. I'm going to hang with you guys for a little bit longer to take some of your calls to read your questions, but I want to make sure we get this as tight as possible to make sure that people out there get to see this. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Stay tuned for more. If you're watching, don't go anywhere just yet. Live viewers, I may even take a couple quick calls. Appreciate you guys. We'll be back tomorrow at 5 as the trial begins. Oh, my goodness. I can't believe we're here. <laughs>